Welcome back guys, this is season 4, episode 1, and we got a very, very, very special guest on the Beast Camp Podcast. Burr, 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 burr. We got the one and only Miss Prissy, the Queen of Crump. Woo, 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 woo. Studio audience, give it up, give it up. <laughs> um, yeah, introduce yourself, you know, say a little bit about yourself, a lot about yourself, and we'll just get this conversation going. Uh, what's up, everybody? As Marquisa, uh, everybody in the community calls me Prissy, but um, my real nickname is Mars, and a lot of people don't know that. Oh, <laughs> first, first gem already. <laughs> Mars. I'm 42 years young and I've been dancing for about 35 years of my life. Um, I'm thankful. I'm God fearing. Put God first in everything that I do, no matter how much shit talk I talk. <laughs> <laughs> I always put God first and I'm just here to have a good time. Glad you invited me, Beast. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's a long time. I still coming. T- I'm putting you up on the offer if you need some rain. Long time, yes, yes, Tell yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> All of. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're here once a week, yeah. right? So you moved to Houston, um, and you're here once a week for. Uh, so I teach at LMU. Uh, in the fall, I'm the concert teacher, and then. In the spring, I have a combo class uh, of advanced dance and African American studies. Sheesh. And how did all of that like go about? Well, it's good to stay connected. I'm gonna say that. Uh, I have a friend that I grew up in the dance studio with prior to me becoming a street dancer. His name is Bernard Brown. Shout out to him. We grew up in the studio at Lula Washington here in Los Angeles, and our cross pat our past crossed again i want to say like right before the world shut down in 2019 and he okay. reached out to me and was like yo i'm gonna ask you something totally left field how would you feel about bringing like crump into like a university <laughs> and i was just immediately like call me <laughs> you know because <laughs> something like that it just triggered me emotionally because I have always been a teacher Mm. like prior to being influential in Crump I started off as a dance teacher and I have been prophesied all the time like oh you're gonna be a teacher of so many things you're gonna do God's work but it won't be in the church and I would never want to like take it in I'd resist and so I needed him to call me because at that time in my life I was trying to figure out where I was in my artistry and Mm. I kept asking God for that answer like God place me where I'm supposed to be like I don't have the desire to be a freestyle dancer anymore that has that's not in me anymore but I still have the desire to put my passion and my purpose on others like where do I go and then like a week later I get this phone call from him and so I was like you do know I don't have a degree he's like girl yes you do I was like, I don't. And he was like, no, but you do. He was like, because what these kids are learning about in text, you have experienced in life. Sheesh. And so you need to come in and take this, this position. And I'm like, okay. And I first did a TED Talks for the school. Mm. It's like an intro in an African-American studies department Um, just to talk about the correlation of Crump um, to African-American descent like and then that was like yo maybe you can do more than teach the dance like maybe we can hybrid your class and you not only teach Crump but you teach the the African diaspora which it stems from and I'm just like yeah but y'all know I ain't got no degree though you know (laughs) let's go back to this fact and so shout out to Bernard for believing in me and the the dean of LMU for really like seeing my passion for teaching others and like just pouring into people and it's now three years that I'm working there and I'm on my way to getting my honorable degree and it's just it's feeling good Mm -hmm. it's feeling good it's looking good we we uh, visited yesterday the piece looks amazing um 
the dancers look like they're really enjoying and feeling what they're doing and that's amazing i appreciate that to see um are you allowed to talk about the future plans so what's the future plans with the university uh so once again i got another email from bernard he's my point of reference and he was like prissy the university is getting like a kickback from the agencies that we've invited because there is no hip-hop at the school it's just you and it's making us really rethink the uh, curriculum in the dance department. How would you feel coming in to help with that? And I'm like, yo, like this is just like, and you know, and like I told you, I've been prophesied like, mm. yo, you're going to do God's work, but not in. And Loyola is a Christian university, Catholic, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm still doing God's work, right, you know, right, right. and getting that phone call, I I just start crying like wow here I was not knowing where my place was in crump anymore and God once again gave me a new place like you're gonna do it over here now and you're gonna do it this way and you're gonna do it in the way that you've always done it which is being a force and being like a sensei mm-hmm. and um, coming in uh, creating a uh, the new hip hop curriculum that will go into effect next year. Uh, I've created it to where uh, the details. What's yeah, the details? freshmen have to take West African their first semester. Mm. Uh, second semester is intro to hip hop, meaning mm. like boogaloo, popping and locking house. Mm. And then uh, your second year, you come in with uh, whacking, uh, lo- uh, what is it? Whacking, voguing. Mm. Um, what else did I put in there? Graffiti class. Like I put a lot of elements of hip hop in those first two years. Then your third year will be clown dancing Jeez. and your fourth year to graduate with a degree in dance will be crump. And so I'm just going to speak on that and how that makes me feel Go like, ahead. yes, yes. I know, you know, like I'm not here to keep up with this new generation of women in crump. However, I'm here to set the tone. And and that's always been my due diligence to crump. Constantly set the tone. Okay. After you've done battling, what's next? Mm. After you've done all these tournaments, what's next? When your body is no longer able to chest pop, arm swing, drop, take your shoe off, talk on it. (laughs) What else can you contribute to crump? And this is my contribution, which is now making crump also desirable to where you got to take crump to get a degree in dance. Mm. And what that has now done is shifted the entire dance department at LMU to where ballet and jazz are no longer a requirement to get a degree. These are now the new requirements because the agencies are coming in looking for freestylers and hip hop dancers. And although they have an intensive amount of students there that are like, they're like Harlem School of Ballet, Alvin Ailey degree in that, they is subpar in the hip hop. So just to know that I have my hands in that, And now I can use my hands to open doors to bring my homies in to teach. I'll feel good walking away knowing that I started that, you know. So I'm happy. That's where I should be at 42. Yeah, that is amazing. (laughs) Um, I feel like it would even be more amazing to see your journey to this spot. So you did say something about like your struggles and... You know, I would like to talk about like just some, you know, or yeah. a lot of just yeah. not just your struggles, yeah, but you, also we can talk about whatever you want to right. talk about. Y'all, you know, I'm an open book, <laughs> but yeah, not not just your struggles, just to highlight that, but even how you got out of it. You know, what I'm saying like just like whatever you felt like would help get you here, the good and the bad. You know, what I mean, like where. Yeah. What was some of your biggest struggles <laughs> that you was experiencing? My biggest struggle in my life has always been abuse. Um, I've been abused my entire life. Mm. Uh, my mother was my first abuser. And I just think that it was because she was foreign and she put this level of expectation on me, my brother, and my sister to always be overachievers. Like, 
we weren't allowed to get bees. Um, I was in Kumon from like kinder to 12th grade, even though I was great in math, but it was just, no, you need to be better than, better than, better than. And those words turned to verbal abuse, which turned to physical abuse, to spiritual abuse, you know, and I just knew that dance was going to be the portal to get me out the shit. I just, I knew it because Jeez. at what age? Um, seven. <sighs> yeah, Amazing. At seven. I started dance at two. Um, the abuse kicked in at four because I was becoming like second place in things. And my mom was like, nah, not all the money I'm spending on you. Mm. You will be first. And so then two day classes became seven day classes. And it's like, do school all day and then go to the studio from five to ten and but you better have a's and so dance became my voice i was a very and no one will believe this because i'm extremely outspoken now <laughs> but i was a muted child mm. because of the abuse i was overly nice i was what like you no one knew that i was being abused because my mother dressed it up mm. you know you're the prize child so we're going to dress you a certain way um you're going to always be overly nice everything is always going to be yes you know i remember having walking pneumonia and still competing in a ballet competition in oregon that's how serious my mom was about my excellence you know and so when la street dance found me i was in a place of suicide um not physical but mental like I had no place to pull uh, creativity from because the abuse was just being housed, right? So in the black community, uh, therapy is frowned upon. You don't tell a therapist your business, you go to church, mm. you know? And right. so I, that's why I talk about spiritual abuse. I, you know, pastors, uh, uh, whispering in my ears how to speak in tongues you know it, it was like yo this is not nah it's, and I made a a conscious effort that the moment that I turned 18 that I would decide my own destiny mm. and that's when I found clown dancing and it got me kicked out the house I had to live with Tommy the Clown for a minute because um, my mom was not fucking with that shit like she's like this ghetto it's a uh, Look at all this money I spent on ballet. You should be doing ballet. Ballet is going to get you to the top, you know. And I believed that for a mm -hmm. long time until L.A. street dance kind of saved my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a lot. moment, no, but we appreciate that. Thanks. And we appreciate you sharing. Um, so let's continue it from there mm -hmm. i'm really interested um in your journey of yeah street dance you met tommy i didn't even know you was a uh, living with him and just how was that and then that transition from clown into crump for you Ooh, um <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about ballerina miss prissy yes. transitioning into la Donia. Because that's who I was first. Uh, I did not know that. Uh, ballerina Miss Prissy, because that's where the name came from. I was so balleted out that I walked in first position. So in high school, that was a teasing name. Like, oh, look at you, Miss Prissy. Just always your posture. just And it was just the mechanics of ballet that had placed that on me. So I just rolled with the name. Okay, well, I will be Miss Prissy. That's who I am. Wow. So in high school, that's where that name came from. So I went to Ailey right out of high school, came back, s screwed my ACL, and... I just knew dance was over. And then my mom got me a job at the school she was teaching at because my mom's a retired school teacher. Okay. Um, and I taught jazz in an after school program. I had this dope ass boy in my class named Diamond Santos, tight as shit from the hood, amazing jazz dancer. But you know, kids are mean and they start teasing him. He's like, yo, Miss Prissy, like, 
I can't do jazz anymore because they say it's only for girls, but I found this new style of dance called clowning and I'm going to do that. And you guys know me like I do have an ego. I've always had one. Mm. Um, and I was just like, what? You're going to quit my class <laughs> and go do clowning what the hell is clowning i'm coming with you and so i jump on the bus with this kid i'm not supposed to be doing this shit but i jump on the bus with this kid and i'm like yo we in the hood yo like where are you taking me right now and i pull up on manchester in western to a motorcycle club he's like well you want to come with me and i'm like take the deepest like let me go in here. And when I go in there, you know how it is at the session when it's so hot, the walls is wet. <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> it was like that. And I had never experienced anything like that. Like, BC, you've been around other styles of dance. Yeah. Like, ballet is so, like, it's so posh. It's mm -hmm. so, like, precise. And I'm in this room with all these children of color. Because it wasn't just black. It was black, Hispanic, mixed race. It and they were in there going mod and i'm just like what is this and the lady who ran the group named yogi she's like you're an audition and i'm like <laughs> you're next i didn't even say yes that's i didn't crazy. even say yes and so my heart is racing like i'm like what the, what the fuck did you just get yourself into? Like, <laughs> why did you follow this little boy? Why are you here right now? So I'm like, oh, God. So Peaches and Cream 112, come on. Guess who come out the woodwork to battle me? Tight eyes. He got this shirt tied on his head, hella tight. He got an all white jumpsuit on. He got a, a straw in his mouth that he just keep chewing. He looking at me like food. I've never <laughs> done hip hop in my life. I am strictly a studio kid at this point and I'm 18. And I'm like, what is he doing? What is this Harlem shake? What is this? <laughs> and I'm just staring at him because I know punk. I'm not going back down. And I am a competitive dancer. So I'm like, just watching him. And I'm like, fuck it, here goes nothing. So the first thing that I do is go into a back bend and f jump over into the splits. And now everybody's screaming. So I sticky note that at that moment that, yo, that's going to be my signature. Sheesh. I sticky noted that in that 18-year-old mind frame in 1999, I sticky noted that. And then... After the split, I get up and I started to imitate the Harlem shake that he was doing, but I rolled it all the way through my body and lift my leg up and dropped into the split again. And after that, the yogi, who was the owner, she cut the music off. She was like, all right, she gonna be the captain for the girls. Tight eyes, you the captain for the boys. And I'm like, yo, I'm not here for none of this. <laughs> I'm following Diamond Santos. Like, what? what? This and is insane. This is in 1999. I'm meeting Whoa. Tight Eyes and Miho in a setting. He was there too? Yes, Miho, was, Miho there too? was there. His hair too was tied up. At that time, Miho had hella hair. I'm what? I'm 42. I think they're in their 30s right now. So they were still like early high school age. And I'm college age now mm. so i'm already like what the hell like they introduced themselves to me and now this becomes a part of my life so much that i quit my job you know how this shit get yeah. with crump niggas start staying at your house and shit yeah. that start <laughs> happening and my mom thought i was on drugs like she's like why are you going it's late and i'm just like i'm gonna go to a party and she's like are you a stripper i'm like no i'm a clown dancer and, and she couldn't embrace it and then i got scouted by tommy and then that's when i went over and started dancing with tommy and the rest is like history <laughs> it just took off yeah that's crazy a right lot of, yes <laughs> what i'm envisioning it like everything you talking about that and envisioning the story <sighs> yeah, a lot of crump history that we still gotta 
We still got to hear. Um, <laughs> what was your experience like with Rise? I guess before, during, after, just to leave it open. So Rise was already being filmed uh, like a year before I got involved because they were shooting Tommy. Mm -hmm. uh, I was on tour with the game at this point. I was already Jeez. transitioning like out of like, let me get out the street battles and not waste the money my mom spent on right. me being a studio dancer. Let me find a way to do both. Uh, so at this time I was on tour with Snoop in game. Uh, Little how, C was how choreographing. Old how old were you? That was in 2004. So I was like early 20s. That's crazy. Okay, keep going. <laughs> and so that was my first international experience to doing that. Mm. And it was it was nuts. It was crazy. And I've always been a person that tries to like multitask. So while I was on tour, I would do like little crump workshops mm -hmm. in small studios. Um even though Rise wasn't out yet, I was still trying my best to like get crump to the masses my way. And my way was always choreo because mm -hmm. I didn't know how to teach essence, right. right? I just knew how to put what I was doing and put it in like an eight count. Right. So I was doing that. And so when I got back, Rise was now at, at Jesse Owens Park. And I guess I've always just been who I am, like always just mama and some shit. But I, I walked into Jesse Owens and I see all these cameras and... um because I had already been in the industry at this point, I knew that this was not being done correctly. So I pulled little C to the side. I said, there ain't no like releases. Like, what's up? Like, y'all just got the cameras out. Who's running this? And he's like, oh, that's the director. So I pulled David LaChapelle to the side. And I'm like, why aren't there any like contracts out? Mm. You just in here. He's like, oh yeah, we'll get those tomorrow. So like people thought I was being like, hmm. like spoiling the moment, but I thought I was just trying to like look out to make sure none of us got taken advantage of. We still did in the end, right? But yeah. How do you feel like rise like impacted like your life? I'm still rising, woo! Still rising, you know. Um, there's always a silver lining in a bitter situation, like we were all taken advantage of, you mm. know, um, like most young uh, talent in the hood, people come in and they capitalize off of your ignorance. Mm. Uh, we just wanted to be seen. We wanted people to see what we had been working so diligently on and what was saving us from the streets that we forgot to think about our lineage and our, our legacy and what that would look like financially for us. Right. And so we all got hoodwinked, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The great part about it is that we ended up influencing an entire globe. Right, yeah. Did you feel that? Like when the movie came out, the sort of like that I celebrity? I didn't know how to feel, it was like pandemonium. You know, you're, you're mm -hmm. in the mall, people chasing you, Ooh. but you're broke and then you just get chased to the bus stop. <laughs> Yo, that was so funny. Like, it was. I was like, yo, is this my poster at the bus stop I'm sitting at waiting for the bus? Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was crazy. But, yeah, I definitely felt the impact once we got overseas to promote Rise and mm -hmm. people crying when they met us. All of those things kept bringing me back to what was prophesied on me. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, it just kept making me really, really understand how real God's mercy is for me and um, the calling on my life. Like, even though I be acting a whole ass on, like, the Crumpers page, um, I'm, I'm very honest about who I am. That's one. I don't play about that. Well, like That self-awareness. is. I'm key. so aware. Like, let's not <laughs> pretend like I'm not female Kanye. Like, I don't, I'm her. <laughs> Like, and I'm okay with it. I sit in it, mm -hmm. you know, but I feel like the reason why God just keeps advancing me is because I never forget the promise. That's been the promise all my life since I got into dance. I'm just, I'm just grateful and mm. thankful. Yeah, that movie, 
uh, was the reason why I started crumping. I remember my sister came home with the DVD and said, <laughs> we got to watch this. So <laughs> me and my siblings watched it. Um, and yeah, right away after that, we just went in the garage and tried to crump. And it's just crazy how much that movie hmm. is like 70, 80 percent of the reason why people started crunk especially from my generation and mm. like a little bit before a little bit after so yeah that movie was super super impactful and then like when i watched it uh stomp the yard just came out oh, on, wow. on a theater so my sister came back again i was like yo like todd eyes was in it miss prissy i was like so i'm gonna watch it <laughs> And then it was only the first scene, and I was like, oh, I thought they was in it. And yeah, so, I thought we was in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna, let's talk about Stomp the Yard. How was that? How was... <laughs> Stomp the Yard, let me tell you, I am paying now physically for Stomp the Yard. So that one leg drop that I do in there, <laughs> I think I did that like 30 times. Oh, no. And till this day, I have severe hip issues, like... Uh, I used to hit the split left, right, center. That shit's gone, you know. <laughs> and I, I just think that I think about that eighteen-year-old Ladonia that was like, "Ooh, sticky note that leg drop," and then that being what catapulted my career, but also is the reason why I'm at the chiropractor. Like, <laughs> so um, Stomp the Art was great. Uh, we shot in Atlanta uh, to see how inspirational we were to Columbus Short and Chris Brown mm -hmm. to the point where Chris Brown start coming to the Dunamis yep. uh, we start having sessions at Columbus Short's house like Sheesh. the power of Crump bro like they forgot they were celebrities like <laughs> like yo Chris what you doing at Dunamis battling J-Slide right J-Slot aired him. <laughs> he did the, he did the impossible. Ah, he aired him, bro. <laughs> J-Slot don't never have to battle nobody. He right. aired him. Right. He aired him. <laughs> he aired him. I'm crying. Okay, my question. Can I have a question? Oh, yeah. Was there, was there a lot cut out of, of Stop the Yard? Yes. Like, were y'all, like, we saw roughly two minutes, Beast. Was there probably way more than uh, that? I had lines. What? Yeah. No way. Mm -hmm. In the battle scene? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then in the fight scene that happens well, afterwards. Do you remember some of your lines? I don't. Damn. I smoke a lot. Once. <laughs> Just saying. But I learned a lot being on set. Um, that was rough to be on set with tie dyes because we weren't in a good space with one another and we had to pretend like we were. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, we did create magic though that continued to influence the community and that we can't, we can't take away. Like I am still in awe at all of us in that scene. I'm in awe at uh, Adrian Boykins mm -hmm. uh, for making the hot ass track yep. and then the J Squad remixing that joint, you yeah. know, I'm in awe at T Fly. Yeah. I'm in awe at myself, Chris, uh, Othean, who is now like the girl that I battled in there. She now like puts all the clothes together for Sierra Usher. Like, I'm in awe at where we all are in life, you know, and it's just like, yeah, so, memories. So yeah. Memories. Yeah. Uh, one more about these movies. How did you feel? about your battle scene at Rise. I mean, we talked about it. I think it would just be cool to... I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> for I people. absolutely hated it. For what reason? <laughs> so let's let's swing it back to how I told you, like when I was a kid, always in the competitive, um, just constantly competing, 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 and competing not because I wanted to, mm. but because other people had an outlook on where my dance story should, you know, go. Mm -hmm. um, I was always challenged. I, it was always, yo, Marquisa should battle this girl at turns in ballet. Yo, Marquisa should battle this girl in tap. Yo, Marquisa should... So when I got to 
like street dance i didn't come in on no battle shit mm. i came in on the camaraderie the the fact that i found a brotherhood a sisterhood with these people that i'm dancing with it was like a fellowship the the constant oh i love the session i absolutely there's a no judge zone i can get off what i went through in the day and not feel no type of way mm. so when i got in this mode to have to battle la nina someone who inspired me that's number one I already felt crazy. Like, you want me to battle the the girl that inspired me to even get into street dance? I don't like the way that makes my moral compass feel. But it be that shit. People talking shit like, oh, if you hard, you should battle her. If you if you this and then the peer pressure. Right. And so I'm on stage and. You know, they announced me winning and then they show that scene where me and my team are like around the trophy and then they show her like in like sorrow. Mm. Y'all, that doesn't feel good for me, mm. you know, because she was somebody that I idolized. Number one, being a dark skinned woman in dance is already a struggle and she was thriving, mm. you know, and so it was just like to come in and basically take her crown and put it on my head. It was just like, oh, I don't like the way this makes me feel. So when Rise, let's say that, Rise labeled me as the queen of crump, all of that shit felt weird. Mm. And then when I'm doing all these sitcoms and fucking interviews and it's like, the queen of crump, Miss Prissy, it's just like, I'm just a dancer, just a real good one. Mm. You know, and you guys are putting this on me. I'm not. And so then you start to wear it. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I guess I'm her. Mm. How was that process from the queen I, of crump process? I went through a, po a point in my life uh, where I, I had a narcissistic flair. I have no issue saying that. That's okay. like, I think that's okay. It's, yeah. um, it, because it's part of the journey. Yeah. It's a part of the journey, right? Yeah. What I'm on TV. I'm the. I was the iPod girl. That big ass poster on Sunset with the girl with the iPod. That was me. Like, really? I yes. I'm starting to feel my shit. Like, okay, I guess Six I am days. the queen of crump, you know. And now it's like, who want to test me, you know? And then after you've battled so much and you still are not feeling whole, it's like. Maybe that's the wrong reason to be in this shit. She... You know, and when I started to see other girls come up, I wouldn't embrace them because I was learning these tactics from the other competitive energies around me. And I always remember how Tide Eyes perceived me in Crump Kings when he said in the ring, like, yeah, Prissy's the girl that, you know, she'll take your sucker. So I'm just like, oh, you're, you're putting me in the light of a bully? But then there's that doormat effect of being an abused child and wanting to be loved and wanting to be accepted. So you embrace that. You doormat yourself and you become the bully because the bully is accepted. Rather be feared than loved. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So now it's like, damn, I'm wearing this crown of thrones, of thorns, because that's what it really felt like. Let me take this shit off. And then that's when I was like, yo, Queen Buck hypes the new Queen of Crump. Like, I don't even want this shit no more. That's when I scratched the 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 Queen of Crump name on Instagram mm -hmm. and went back to who I was recognized as in high school. And that was Miss Prissy. Miss Prissy. Now it all. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why when <laughs> I post, like, me freestyling, I don't write, the Queen of Crump. I don't even type that I'm crumping because I know... Now at this stage, I'm hybriding who I am. Mm. I'm bringing back who I left behind, who I thought I didn't need, that jazz dancer, that contemporary dancer. You don't need that. Crump is the reason why you're here today. No, that's not why. I'm here because of the discipline mm. of what it takes to be the best. Not the best at Crump, but the best at being my brand, who I am, and so, when I got to that space, it took a minute, yo. I didn't drop that shit till I was 40. That's just two years ago. Yeah, I remember you texting me about, like, not feeling comfortable with the Queen of Crump. I, and then, I didn't. Because that was your Instagram name, and then you changed it. And I remember you texting me about that. And I was yeah, like, I felt hey. weird because <laughs> Crump right now is in a state of where it's about ego 
and battling and I'm not there. Mm -hmm. When I look at these women and they are in the trenches, I'm not there. I don't deserve to be the queen of crump. That's not, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take any way, take anything away from me being this person on my shirt. I'm mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. for sure. I possess all these qualities. I can shoot, I can sing, I can rap. I, that's who I am. Amazing. Yeah. You know, and when I let go of that title, yo, that shit felt crazy. <laughs> I rolled a fat ass blood and just <laughs> chilled like, ah, y'all can have that shit. You know, like, because it's like, <laughs> I did because. An extendo. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, bruh, Marquisa, Mars, what are you doing? Mars is amazing. Yeah, like, that's who I am. And it's just like, you're going to fall into this ego shit where you're like trying to challenge every girl. Girl, you're going to get old. What are you doing? Like, mm. give these women their shine and uplift them in the background. Mm. You don't even got to uplift them in the front. You don't got to train none of these girls. You don't got to do none of that. All you have to do is be everything that these men are not being. And that's Jeez. being supportive. And constantly pushing them to be more than just in the battlefield. Mm. That to me makes me a queen. I don't have to be the queen of crump. There are girls out here that I am in awe. I clutch pearls when I see them. Like, yeah, you got any shout outs? Okay, here at the go. top of my list, Mel. Mel. That's she's like. I told you. She's number I one. Told you. Because <laughs> she's straight from the motherland. Literally. She's like. The essence is in her. She's not diluted. She's like, none of that. In her blood. And her, she has my tenacity. She has Daisy's meekness. She, um, she has uh, the creativity of tight eyes, the showmanship that both me and Little C possess. Mm -hmm. And she has the non-fear zone of Miho. So when I look at her, she's like David and whoever else is up against her is Goliath. But she's David. And David won the war. She, yeah. He ended up getting Goliath <laughs> with the tactics. Not necessarily the strength, but the tactics. So she's my number one. Mel. Uh, Mel. Uh, twin QP. Uh, second to her is Felicia. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. Twin Moody Rags, a.k.a. Dancer. A.k.a. Dance, that's the Instagram. Dude, <laughs> she is the definition of live. She's so young. And brolic. She cares nothing. I love it here. <laughs> so it's her, Felicia, Vashonda is Sheesh. like... Lady C4, if y'all... Yes, Lady C4. I know yeah, I'll be calling their real nah, names. You, I'm so sorry. You know them You know them by name. <laughs> yeah, like, when I see Vashonda, I am so, like, lifted by her. Um, her mechanics. Uh, the fact that she reminds me so much of Eyes. Um, young Eyes. I remember Tide Eyes in the cartoon era just being the dancer in the corner. He was always in the corner. Like he, it would start off with the towel around his neck. Then the towel would transfer to over his head. Um, Todd Eyes was always shy. A lot of people don't know that. He was very, very, very shy. The only thing that exuded his presence was the dance. And I think that's where he and I have a connect. Notice how, even though I don't fuck with this nigga, I'm gonna always speak that real. The connect is the trauma bond, right? Most kids that have been in traumatic experiences are quiet and they use the art to convey the message. Mm. So I recognize that in tight eyes very young that, OK, although you're never going to tell me what you've gone through, the fact that you constantly bite your nails, the, can the fact that you have to dance in a tight space. Those are all signs of you've gone through something. And hey. We're not going to judge you. Just get it out on the dance floor. Vashonda possesses that. Mm -hmm. I love how you circled it back. To yeah. Me. Talk about it. She possesses that. I am in awe 
every time I see her. Um, women overseas, queen buck hype. Boop, boop. I don't even, we ain't even got to talk about the rest. <laughs> her. Did you see the battle with instinct in Mel, though? I know you're talking about overseas. No, send it to me. Yeah, that's, me. that's a new one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, send it to instinct me. Instinct was in such a bag, mm. like a pocket. And it wasn't like, it wasn't all, and I, I'm not the greatest crumpet. For, forgive me, is instinct a boy? Instinct is a woman. Yeah, she's a, she's fairly new in, in Texas. Oh, heavy, I'm talking Where's about. she from? Texas. I think Dallas. Really? She's, she's accessible? Yep. She's, she's down there. <laughs> okay. She might be on your block. She might need a retwist. I'll push you up. I need two doors down from Could be. That battle was dope. Dude. Yeah, those are those are the women that I look at. Um uh just like I was saying in the commentary when I was talking about EBS with you and eyes and uh Greg. You can <laughs> those women that I labeled they don't have to do a single move. I would just like to sit in a room with them and watch them laugh. I'd probably cry. You know? Like, that's where I'm at with Crump now. It's not... Man, I'm just so thankful for growth because it's it's not about... It's not about how many moves you can get off to this break in the music. Mm-hmm. It's not about that for me. It's more so about how many times you in the corner just like this. Mm, Getting it off. Mm. When I see that, that resonates with me. It makes me channel everything I've gone through in life to get crump to you. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. (laughs) To all the women that you shouted, y'all doing y'all big way, y'all doing it. <laughs> and y'all doing y'all big. Shout out to my daughter. Yes, yes. Shout them out. They are shout beautiful. them out, bro. Yes. Asada don't want to have shit to do with crumb. She like <laughs> y'all wilding. I'm gonna do ballet. She's the clown though. No, or no. That's Sa- the... Sadia. Sadia. Sadia, okay. um, Sadia will not lab with me. She reminds me of me. And that's why I get irritated when people don't think that my crump is crump. Because unlike a lot of these women, no man ever trained me. Sheesh. This is pure me. If I suck, it's because of me. If I'm tight, it's because of me. And my daughter is the same way. Like, she know I'm labbing in the living room. She won't come out. <laughs> How old is she? Old Sadi's 14. 14. So she's blossoming into a younger woman. Yeah. What, like, what challenges are you facing? Because y'all used to be... And that's like that's the biggest heartbreak about parenthood. It's like well, she doesn't let me like do any hip shake TikTok dances. She says I'm too old, so I can't do any TikToks with her. She's like, Mom, you can't be on the gram doing TikToks with me. I made her do one with me on my birthday. We did like a hop out together. Like I had to force her. She's like, Mom. It's like, dude, please let me just have this moment of nostalgia with you. Yeah, Sadia. She, I give her full credit for who she is in her artistry. Um, she does not allow me to ming, uh, like, like what it like. No, nah, I can't. <laughs> She'll come out of her room sweaty. I know what she's been doing, and she'll just look at me and she'll be like, "What?" I was like, "You was in there dancing." She's like, "Yeah, but with my headphones on." I'm like, okay, bro. Like, <laughs> she's like, you inspired me using there doing it. So then, like, I went and did mine. Sheesh. I was like, can I see your your footage? She was like, it's for me. So I see myself in Sadia because that's how I was with my crump when yeah, I was developing sure. my style. Like, I would not allow Miho see Dragon eyes I would not allow them to influence me because if if they were to have influenced me how could I have rightfully stood as being a female influence a female presence Sheesh. in crump that's crazy how could I have ever been if that's the case then make me lady C you know make me lady eyes then that means that I am a d- direct influence of them I'd rather people talk shit about me like, yo, Prissy's trash. She's not, she not dancing like the girls today. I'm not supposed to. I'm not them. Mm. I'm me. 
You know, if I'm going to do this leg drop forever, at least it's mine. Yeah. I didn't borrow it from anyone. Yeah. You know, so it's like that's all I really look for now with the women in Crump. Like, do your big one. Mm. Don't do your big homie's lab. Do your big one. Do you? Do you? Yeah, so. Amazing. All right. Here's uh, the kicker. What's your uh, thoughts on the current state of Crump? <laughs> Why are you gonna make me answer this right now, Beast? You know I gotta get that's, on the flight. That's our uh, that's our main. Be pissed on the flight. <laughs> pissed on the flight. Sweaty as shit. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Not excuse. Skew. Excuse me. Um. Real shit. Because I'm not in the community right now. I'm gonna speak from. A, a space of just being on the outside looking in. That's fine. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, tired of battles. All battles, tournaments, main events. Yes. Street battles. Yes. Yeah. But you like battles because you review battles. I do. The good ones. So you like Where, the good where's battles? the buzz? Yeah. Like the oversaturation. Of the oversaturation. It's like when somebody walk out the house and they got them all yellow. Shut like, up. mix that shit up, bro. Like, you look like a mustard package. Get this shit up out of here. <laughs> like, so, that's what it be for me. And it's like, I get it. Like, people be here to be like, yo, Prissy, you got to do more reviews. You funny as shit. Like, and it's like, I'm only funny because I have to make this comical. Because if I get into Professor P, y'all going to hate me. So I have to find the comic relief within this. But I hope that the community takes away the fact that I know my shit mm -hmm. without having to be in the shit. Right? So that's why I went. I don't know if you looked when I was doing the, the EBS. Beast, as dope as you are, you still could come to me for the mental lab. Right. I don't. I can't train you in shit physically. Right. I'm sure. old. Hips done pushed out kids. I can't do none of that shit y'all here doing. I be, I be huffing and puffing going up the stairs at LMU. I'm honest <laughs> with where I'm at in life. Yeah, yeah. But I will always be able to sharpen your knife because I created the knife that you're using out here to cut niggas up with. Sheesh. I don't have to ever teach you this motion. I can say it to you. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think that all creators should be in that bag right now. There should not be one creator on the dance floor still trying to show and prove if that's the case you're not a creator god is not down here trying to show and prove nothing god gave us what free will free choice god is up on top looking at us make choices that i'm not saying i'm god i'm just trying to be god like you know what i'm saying and as a parent of crump i have given you the tools mm -hmm. You're a parent, right? Cool. You give your child the tools. You're not about to be sitting in the classroom with them, raising your hand, answering the cl Your time has gone, bro. Why are you trying to sit in the classroom? Let them come home and let go over the assignment with you. And so that's where I'm at with Crump. Like, yo, why y'all still down here? Get out of here. Leave room for Sadia. When you have children, when you, you know what I'm saying? Like, do your big one and get up out of here. Beast, after you've done all these classes and this podcast, pass this shit on. Mm. It'll be, it'll be wrong for you to hold on to it forever. Yeah. When I told y'all last night, all the stuff I'm doing at LMU, that's not for me to sit at LMU till I'm 80. What? <laughs> that means I ain't shit. <laughs> I'm exactly. I don't want to be a gatekeeper. I don't want to be a gatekeeper of Crump. I just want to continuously influence whoever is going to watch this podcast. I hope they take away. Yo, P came in, did our big one, did our shit in the industry, walked away from the industry, survived domestic violence, survived so much shit, went back, became a teacher, pulled away. And now I can do that shit too. Mm. That's what it's about. And if I see people like, yo, the other day I seen um, Virgo. Mm. He teaching at a university. That shit, yo, it touched me. Mm. Like, That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. 
fuck that make me want to get off those are the things that promote the the liveness like if you like get off y'all get off y'all yeah. like it don't be somebody trying to battle prissy or i'm coming for your title bitch you can never you can never because i don't want that title <laughs> like i don't you think that that's what I, I don't even want it i never wanted it it was given to me you mad i got jays on i didn't want these jays somebody gave me these jays these was free. They thought I was worthy. <laughs> I remember Crush asked me one day. <laughs> shout out to Crush. Um, Crush asked me one day at the uh, corner session in front of everybody. He's like, yo, Prissy, why you on battle no more? And I just looked at him. I said, no one calls me out. And I mean that till this day. I think it's disrespectful to call me out, eyes out, miho out, dragon out. It's disrespectful. In the way you do it? Or just at all? At all. Wow. You out here challenging God? Mm. Are you? Are you? <laughs> you challenging your mom? You challenging your parents? Mm. Now, if the parent want to get down there and get aggressive with you, that's different. But if the parent is doing what they're supposed to do, which is continuously making ways for you to, why are you checking for me? Why are you checking for me? That's like Sadia right now talking about battle me, mom. What? <laughs> why? That it, look. That is not everybody's outlet. That's just that's just how I look at it. That's why I don't battle. It does not serve me. What serves me is watching the community grow, blossom. When I see the kids in the session, like that is just like ah. Uh, Some good kids. It, no, great. Great. Puda. Great. Yeah, Puda. Amazing. That little that little girl overseas with the bang. She got the Bayab. <laughs> you seen her? What's her name? Adeline. I follow her. I be on her shit. Fangirl with her. She be having that bayang with the Bayab. <laughs> yeah, Bayab, Bayab. Yeah. Solo, like, what is it, baby Solo? Uh, he's Jew. Yep, baby Solo. Now. Baby Solo is yeah. not even, that's not normal. Yeah. To be advanced as a kid. Yeah. What's up going on? He got yep. a lot of he got a lot of financial hardships going on. <laughs> he got bills. He, I got, he bills. got loans. Do you, do you got enough time for me to ask one more question? No. Okay. Just one more question. Because <laughs> I have I have right. another question. Okay. Because okay. state of crumb. So, one of the most beautiful things you talked about online was about people owing you flowers and just really paying respects for the performance. Um, contemporary part mm. of Crump, because you've been seeing that a lot more, right? I'm from Minnesota. Shout out Static, shout out Herb. Static was beautiful. Herb, I love you. Love, love <laughs> you, Herb. Uh, you too, Danny. But, we love you, Jamie. We love, we love you, Minnesota. But, uh, so, real quick, before I get too long-winded, with the contemporary piece, can you elaborate a little bit more? What What did you mean when you said that? I know we all give you your flowers. We, un we respect Prince. We know that you paid that way. But when you're saying, hey, when it, when it happens, give me my flowers, what does that look like to you? And how can people, you know, access and make sure, like, check check in and make sure that they're not stepping on any toes when they do do that contemporary fusion of crump. There has always been a stigma all around the world when it comes to women in the line of creation, right? There's this thing that, like, especially in crump, like, I don't think anybody ever puts themselves in my shoes of like that mo that mode that I was in. Remember when I was on the Crumpers page and I would just be going crazy? <laughs> it's because I was. I was going crazy because I just want to, and I'm not going to be long-winded on this because I it's in my frontal lobe. I ain't even got to go get that bitch in the back. It's <laughs> right here. I said, yo, do these motherfuckers understand how I feel to have literally escaped Tommy? get to Mama Toon house, find a new place to house the baby. The baby is crump. I'm Mary, right? I'm, y'all wasn't like, I'm, I'm taking the baby and putting it in a new environment and putting it on bodies that have never seen this baby. And I had to groom this into them for you guys to become interested enough 
Why is that so hard to believe? That's what was always the triggering part. Why is it so hard to believe that a woman had her hands in creation of crunk? Is it because it's like testosterone filled? You don't think women deal with pain? Women deal with pain every time them 21 days hit. Like, I can communicate how pain looks on me too. You know what I'm saying? Like, m black men aren't the only men stressed out in the hood. So are black women being raped at gunpoint. I can communicate that through dance too. Let me show you. It may not look as aggressive as it does on these men, but please don't discredit it. And so when I showed how I can blend my contemporary passion and flair and still make it make sense in Crump, I need my flowers, yo. Because that is a soft essence that eyes did not possess, Miho did not possess, C did not possess, Dragon didn't possess. That came from my womb, my hurt, my pain. And now when I see it being used and people are like, yeah, I was inspired by this movie I watched. Shut the fuck up. The movie you watched was Rise. <laughs> Stop playing with me. You know, but you're quick to give eyes his credit. With the cocoa shells and the and the hat and the brim and the, you'll you're quick to put eyes on a hashtag, but not Miss Prissy though. Mm. It's a girl, nah. I'm a man. I'm not gonna allow my mind to think that a girl had anything to do with such a masculine energy. It's niggas in Crump right now that I could sock out real bad. I know it. If I start channeling what I've gone through in my life, I'm liable to bleed you. You get what I'm saying? So d that's what I mean. Like, give me my flowers, yo. Mm. You give them the eyes all day. Give me my flowers in, yo. Prissy, the reason why Crump is in entertainment now. Yo, Prissy is the reason why Crump is at a university being sought after to get a degree. Like, Give me my shit, yo. All that other shit you can keep. Y'all can keep that Queen of Crump title. Y'all, I don't care. Give me my accolades and the work that I'm putting in. My, I'm what I am a slave to the movement, even though I'm not in the community. Mm. <laughs> All right, last one. One. One, one, look, but it, it might trickle down. <laughs> oh shit! I'm talking. As, Get a napkin. I'm talking as a fan now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! As a fan, and we just speaking. Okay. Hypothetically, okay. But what will it take to get all five of you guys in one room? Lock doors. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think? Like, just that would look like. It would have to be a mediator. Like um, wishful thinking type. I know? am. I pray for that. Listen, I may have like right now, uh, Miho and I, we're not on good terms, but I love him. You know, I absolutely love him. He's a stellar artist, you know, but I have expectation for my day ones mm. as 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 Mount Buckmore. When I hear certain things about your persona, fuck your dancing, your persona, who you are, your your moral compass being shifted and you still trying to be out here on some leadership, know that I'm going to step out of the Miss Prissy body and step into Marquisa and get at you. Mm. And you have to be able to receive that and not be upset with that. Receive that because I love you and these niggas lust you. I love you. That's a difference. Big difference. Like, I watch people cry over tie dyes dancing. I've watched people cry over Miho's dancing, C's dancing, mine, Dragons, Crush, all these people. But do know that I have known these people prior to YouTube. Mm. So I have a higher level of expectation on them, you know? And so if you're going to get us in a room, there has to be full transparency. Mm. I'm ready for that. 
I just came on this podcast and admitted out loud that there was a stage in my life in Crump where I was starting to be filled with narcissism mm. and I had to step away and check me. It, I wasn't about to allow y'all to do it. Right. My ego won't allow that. Right. But I'm going to go home and get in the mirror and be like, hey, you wildin', Marquisa. That's growth. You're fucking wildin'. Who are you inspiring right now being this narcissistic? Get the fuck off of the Crumpers page. Check yourself. Mm. I, I couldn't allow y'all to do that. I had to do that so that when I came back, I'm still me, but in doses. Like, yo, check you, yo. Don't, don't, uh-uh. Don't do that. Mm. Come here. Sit down, Marquisa. Why are you feeling like that right now? It's okay to talk to yourself. Right. Because sure. I got to get me together before the world do. Because what I'm not going to do, in my, in my culture, we have this thing, you take me for puppet show. So that means you're taking me for a puppet show. I'm not a puppet. You're not about to have me on camera crying, screaming about the things that matter to me. They don't matter to nobody else. Mm. I had to check me and realize that. Like, this is shit that matters to Marquisa. This don't matter to them. Get on the fuck up out of there. <laughs> like, the moment that I did that, it allowed me to be open to more possibilities of, you know, hey, maybe I can sit down with these gentlemen. Maybe I can do that and not raise my voice and not cry and not stomp and scream and throw things because I've stepped away. Mm. I've become a uh, a spectator of Crump as a, a and not a participant. So now when I stepped out and people would send me screenshots of shit going on in Crump and it was just raging narcissism, I said, yo, that's why you was on that tip because you was trying to match the energy. Mm. You're supposed to shift the energy. Sheesh. Get the fuck out. So the shift was LMU. Mm. The shift was Houston. Nothing feels better to know that you're a made man. I made me. Mm. Nobody's in charge of me but me. I made me. Mm. I went to Houston and made me again. Mm. You know? And so, if these men could take anything, and that's C, Miho, Dragon, Eyes, take that from me, the mother of Crump. Don't be afraid to step away from what we created to get right. And we need to step away and get in a room and get right. People still need us. Not on the dance floor. They don't need us there. Y'all got that shit covered. Oh, God. Y'all got that shit. Y'all, oh, God. They, oh. <laughs> Illis, EBS, all the shit you telling me. I feel like a granny when you telling me this shit. I'm like, and hey, what they be doing over there? Shut up. <laughs> uh -huh. And they got T-shirts for it. Like, that's how I feel. You know, but I'm cool with feeling like that, right? I should. I should not be in here trying to battle your beast camp kids. Like, I should not be in here doing that. That would be wild. I'd be like, Prissy, please. Like, Stop. cut the tape, cut the tape, <laughs> cut the tape. And I think that we accept it from Tide Eyes because he's so profound in the dance mm. that we accept it. Let's stop accepting it and expect growth from him. I'm not accepting any of that anymore. I'm expecting growth now. Mm. So this is why I go hard on them. I go hard on all of them. Dragon, shout out to my brother. He married me. He was my official at my wedding. And I told wow. him, you are exactly where you're supposed to be in your life right now. If you want to come back to Crump to give a word, do that. But you don't have to give a chest pop or arm swing ever again. God channel that energy now through your word now use that just like god channeled my energy back into being an educator it does not make me six degrees of separation from crump it doesn't if anything i'm creating more degrees of it mm. yeah it just feels like the five of you guys just have such a key role in crump and just y'all not being together just it makes you know, me sad too yeah there'd be times like i'd be looking at shit and i'd be wanting to send it to chairs so we could laugh because only me and him would know it or like some shit that only me and miho would know like hey look at this dude look like for the dude from back in the day <laughs> and i can't do that with nobody but mm, them right, you know right. like and so i do miss that 
but I can't dwell there. Right, right. I pray on it and I leave it alone. And I just hope and pray that we can all come around and fix this shit. Look, as a fan, I'm already <laughs> getting hyped. <laughs> like, we're just imagine us throwing it. an expo. What? Mount Buckmore expo. Just a picture of mm -hmm. y'all five. Y'all was close when it was your music video, right? Yeah. Who was there? You. Everybody but Lil C. Shh. <sighs> that was the closest. That was the closest. Yeah. But yeah, as a fan, I guess part of this last question is. This again, hypothetically speaking, okay. that that locked room is done, the mediator. So, what would be the first thing y'all would do? I've always had this vision that the five of us would go on this like nationwide tour where we pull up and do shows, but we audition people to come in for the night and do a show with us and then go off to the next city, do that again. Like, that's what I envision for us. That's where we should be in our careers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't envision us battling. I don't envision just Debu. I envision us <laughs> on a fucking tour bus laughing about all, like, you remember that time I was mad at you? You remember that time you didn't talk to me for like three years? Bro, bro pass the Henny, bro. That's where my mind is. And us just pulling up like how American Idol comes into town mm -hmm. and we're all on a panel auditioning dancers. I want that for us. Mm -hmm. Desperately. We owe that to our lineage. Joe owes that to Delilah. Jay, I mean Jay. Eyes owes that to Tavare. I owe that to Sadia and Asada. Dragon owes that to Eden, his son and the twins. Like we owe that to them. That's how you create the legacy. So I'm never against it. It just has to be done right. Mm. And the person that will be the mediator. Yeah, I was just going to ask, who would you envision would be the mediator? <laughs> hmm. Wow. No one of church descent. Yeah, no. Do you think it has to be like a crumper from? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe mediators. To mediators. Make easier, to make it easier. Yeah. Um, I would see like. Britty, mm. uh, if you don't know Britty, get to know yeah. him. He's profound. Brady. Brady like, amazing. Uh, I would see uh, Solo. Yep. Um, it could be 10 mediators. It's all good. <laughs> no. And not to say it like that. I love Rowdy, but Rowdy was in eyes. And he's still committed to that energy. Like, it's a... Solo has gone on to respectfully respect us and create his own shit. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I deem him trustworthy to be in the room. Um, somebody on some business shit. Like, some business shit. And, and, and they don't have to be crump at all. What about Daisy? No. No. Daisy has admitted over and over that she knows that she is a product of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Daisy is very meek. You and her possess that. Y'all can't be in a room with us. We are piranhas. Mm -hmm. We need somebody in the room that's going to hold me, hold back when he start wilding. There's somebody that's going to grab me from grabbing something to throw at one of them. We need. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I like, know, yeah, yeah. because I know. Hypothetically speaking. Yeah. But. <laughs> I am always open to that. Um, who else asked me this question? Brock from Palm Springs. Okay. He reached out and said, yo, what would it take to get y'all all together? I said, a locked room. It has mm. to be a locked room. Like, no one the can real leave. real lock-in. Yeah. Like, you know how we have, like, buck-ins, everybody stay in? It would have to be that. And it would have to be in something like this. Um, sorry, Rev. It probably couldn't be here. Somebody will break your mirrors. Um, but... <laughs> It w yeah, it would have to be in an open space, water, food, chairs, like it would have to be that. And then whoever those mediators are would now be the, the MCs to host this situation. Even Monk would be good hey. to be a mediator. You know what I'm saying? Or like snub. Y'all do great holding me hold back. You know what I'm saying? I don't. <laughs> Little C is like me. He's extremely articulate he's away with words yeah for um sure. 
so I'm not worried about him and Dragon is the same way I'm more so mer worried about like Miho and Tie Dyes being in a room together mm. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Not that loud. laughs> um, nice yeah I'm, yeah that yeah that got, that got me live um <laughs> Just last remarks, I guess. Any last message, uh, inspiring words for anyone watching, and just uh, outro, I guess. Yeah. I want to say this. It's never too late to make a change, especially if the change has to do with upward motion. Don't be afraid to step out of what everybody seems to think is normal to create your own reality. And if more people in the creative process of Crump would do that, Crump would already be a new style already. It would be a new style, right? Because Crump was birthed from clowning. Why can't we have, why can't we birth something else now? Sheesh. You know, um, also to uh, other news, I'm going to have my own series on PBS. Sheesh. Um, I first heard out here. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to it, yo. <laughs> Charlie Brown mom. Um, <laughs> But and I'm going to be strictly talking about uh, the evolution of Crump and its correlation to hip hop. So they're going to be filming me for about like three months. Amazing. Just back on this ride shit again. Hey. <laughs> I'm nervous, but I'm just going after my dreams right now. Uh, follow me on Instagram, the mm. official Miss Prissy. Yep, yep, yep. Not the Queen of Crump page. That's my backup page. I didn't even know that still existed. I had to do it when I got hacked. I had to do it when I got hacked. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. I didn't know what other name to use. I have a private page called Mars Forever, but that's like just my personal life. Like, uh, but yeah, I love everybody. It's all love. Crump is for everybody. I was with. <laughs> um, I think you are the first creator on our podcast. No? Mm. Do we have Miho? Yeah. All right, let's just in case if we cut this out. Yeah, yeah, but I think. <laughs> yeah. Film. Nah, because he he always said. Film. You're the <laughs> second. You're the second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my closing remarks is obviously thank you so much. I've learned so much, not just uh about the dance, but about you. Right. And it makes a lot of sense of your journey. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot to take in, to be honest. Um, for me, being in the lineage of Under Eyes and even in that spell as well of looking at you in a certain way, you know, like, it just kind of humbled me of just, like, you as a human, you know what I mean? Even though I was still under... I always gave you a hug, always, you know, even when, like, the beef was heavy. Um, it was sirloin. But, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm just glad that we have this platform to have your story, you know, like, more centralized. Um, the more of the politics, you know, I'm more about, like, who are you as a human and just where the conversation went. Um, yeah, I mean, you're so... <laughs> funny <laughs> on Facebook and whatnot and you know I just would like to see people like how I'm starting to see you and like really kick it with you and I said it last night and I say it openly like um I really see her as a big sister she would call me that. and just like tell me what I need to do and what I need to not do and I'm always open to that you know um and even if I disagree or not it's always open mm -hmm. to it and yeah you need to get into acting and what you still look 18 I'm yeah like, <laughs> yo i be i be on and it's eggs. so out of the box i'm like but that's some people not some people that but that's people that you need to be around so people that, that will want to elevate you right and yeah. sometimes that challenges the ego you know or that's challenges my comfortability of well i'm kind of good with the battle scene and the flying out but just like you say you know we're getting older and 
suffering through jet lag and going in circles and stuff so again i just appreciate you a lot and i really hope that the people watch here uh rookie vet it don't matter just uh yeah just get to know you from past present and even future so i appreciate this means a lot to me yeah because it means a lot to me too um and i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna shut up um Notice your language when you say, when I was under. Mm. You're over it now. Yeah. You know, you're over it now. You realize that that's not a space that you ever had to dwell in. Mm. Maybe you you thought you needed it uh, to get the stability and, that you needed to sustain your position in this, this community. But God's promise was already on your life before you got here. Mm. You know, so it it is what it is. This is why... Even though, like, Mel is in Crown Glory, I have Lotus, Cozy. I don't call any of them my little homies and say that they're under me. We just all resonate with one another. I love it. And I, we are all uh, women and men that I feel like should be sitting on a throne. And that's that's why they are who they are in my life, you know. And I'm just thankful that you and I are in a space where we can have these kind of talks, mm. even outside this right. podcast, you right. know, just thanks for looking at me as a sister. Like, yeah. I appreciate that. No, for sure. Like, that, I feel nah. corny right now. Nah. Corny. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this will not be the last time she's here. Uh, well, y'all thanks. know how our podcast works. Uh, we just bring in guests, but, you know, um, they could come in whenever. So mm. that's always open because... I feel like there's way more to talk about, not even just politics, too, just, like, more of your journey and and all of that. So thank you guys for watching or listening. Please tune in. Please follow her. Uh, hit her up. She is here, alive, and well. Such a huge resource, not just in dance, but in everything. And, yeah, it's just a good time to be a crumpet. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and... Thank <laughs> you.